it can be shared um, for, for wider use. Um, we're also thrilled to have such a great turnout today. We had 195 people uh, register for this event, and I can see the room is filling up quite quickly. Um, and looking at our attendee list, you know, we're, we're just quite encouraged by the wide group of representatives who are attending these meetings um, from both industry and all levels of government. Um, so with that, I am going to pass it over to our co-chair, Marcia Douglas, to provide more details about the program, our partners, and today's agenda. Over to you, Marcia. Thanks, Dustin. So um, off the top, we are starting with our welcome. Uh, and then uh, we are actually going to turn it over to our program manager to tell us a little bit more about themselves from the Circular Innovation Council. Then they're going to give us more of a, uh, Chris will give us more of a background on the Ontario Green Screen Initiative, which uh, was launched in September, but he can tell us more about what we've been up to and why we're here today. Um, and then we'll walk you through our new strategic plan, which we're just launched, we launched in order for, for for Earth Day today. <laughs> and then we'll close it out and sort of tell you where we're at with some of our next steps. Um, and what I was hoping to do now also is just really acknowledge all of the partners who've been part of this just as Justin had. So thank you, Justin. Um, so just to tell you who our advisory committee is, and um, a lot of them are here today on this uh, webinar, we can answer questions too. So we have Justin Cutler, who's our co-chair and myself from the CMPA, uh, Nisha Ali from Spin VFX, Rebecca Applebaum from Actra Toronto, uh, Michael, um, Griffini from City of Brampton, uh, Chris Dunn, uh, the incomparable Chris Dunn from Ontario Creates, uh, Carmen Ford from City of Mississauga, David Hardy from William F. White's Internationals, Jackie Hemingway from IATSE 873, Kareen um, Hebert from Cinespace, Jennifer Keefe Aber from DGC, Randy Cruz from MBSE Canada, Peggy Kiriakidu from NABET 700, Cynthia Lynch from Film Ontario, Andy McAuliffe from uh, Entertainment Partners Canada, Beth Nobes from IATSE 667, and Painter from IATSE 411, uh, Lid Lydia Ragusa from Pinewood Toronto, Magalie Samard from the City of Toronto, Jim Teven from Sim, and Marianne Waterhouse from Peacock Alley Entertainment. Uh, everyone here um, is part of the advisory committee. So as Justin said, um, we're all members of the industry, various levels of government, and of course, Ontario Creates that have come together to try to, um, to, to advance sustainable production in our industry and help to provide resources, but we're here to work with you, the community. Um, and as part of that, we have Ontario Creates and Chris Dunn, who has been amazing at keeping our ship going for the last while and uh, much more recently, um, but we are thrilled to welcome our new program manager. So the Circular Innovation Council will introduce themselves and a little more about what they do. But we have Caitlin Perry and Joanne St. Goddard from the Circular Innovation Council who have um, thankfully come on board as our, our program manager. So why don't I turn it over to them to tell you a little bit more about themselves. Sure, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think everybody's in Ontario, so I'll say good evening to, to all of the guests. We're thrilled to be able to um, join you um, and, and the, the bountiful attendees uh, to walk through the sustainability plan that, uh, that we have newly launched and finalized. We want to first thank Marcia and Justin and Chris who have uh, been incredibly patient and very generous in onboarding us as, uh, as your team um, project manager and uh, we've been working um, uh, re really closely with uh, um, a very broad ranging and, and quite active and passionate advisory committee. So we're, we're thrilled to have um, so much guidance as, as, we, as we move forward with launching this plan on Earth Day today, but also moving into its implementation in, in phase two. So um, to introduce myself, my name is Joanne St. Goddard. I'm the executive director of the newly branded or rebranded Circular Innovation Council. Some of you may have previously recognized our, uh, our old name, uh, Recycling Council of Ontario, which uh, was established almost four decades ago now in 1978. Most people know our organization from the work that we did in creating and launching Ontario's Blue Box, um, uh, which uh, uh, is really our swan song. And from there, we have taken all of our learnings on waste reduction and end of life management, and are now working more broadly as the, as the Circular Innovation Council to shift our attention uh, 
more broadly on, on production and consumption as it relates to resource efficiency and waste reduction and carbon emissions. So our mandate has has uh, expanded. We are uh, and and we are also now a, a federally in, uh, nationally incorporated organization. Um, and to tell you a little bit about our structure, we are a non for profit organization, of course, focused now on the acceleration from Canada's linear economy to a circular one, and uh, really work cross functionally with um, business, uh, governments, uh, other organizations the general public uh, and, a, and the variety of the characters that would be um, our actors that are part of value and supply chains to, to accelerate our transition um, to a circular economy. We really work in four main pillars, education and engagement, which is a really core part of the Green Screens program, as you will come to learn. We develop a lot of resources, services, and tools that help with amplification and acceleration. Um, we do a lot of advocacy and policy work, taking our learnings from research and pilot projects and uh, helping government with uh, with effective implementations of, uh, of regulation and policy. So we're a very small but very busy and uh, excited team to be part of your journey to advance sustainability in the film and TV industry. Next slide. So to preface the um, the guts of the of the sustainability plan itself it's important to learn that we came at this as a circular economic experts and it's really important that you see that um, we've we are taking the benefits that uh, this transition to a circular economy actually affords us in in both economic or I should say in environmental, but also in economic and social gains as well. So it's important to sort of um, uh, explain the definition or the difference between the current way that we produce and consume in our linear economy, which is really about taking resources, making products and materials, using them and then discarding them in waste to a circular economy where um, products and systems by design are um, created to actually reintegrate materials back into production cycles and do so in, the, in, in a way that is, um, uh, has a reduced impact on the environment, but also comes with social equity as well. So keeping our products and our materials at their highest value throughout the entire uh, chain of production and use. Next slide. We describe circularity um, through five different business models. And again, those of you who will be um, starting to see the implementation of the STRAT plan, you will see that we will be examining opportunities for this industry to engage with and to um, uh, uh, really empower uh, all aspects of film and TV to utilize these five business models. Circular supplies, which is really choosing materials, products that are more recyclable, potentially uh, compostable, um, and really thinking about what are the resources that are part of the things that you use in production um, and film um, resource recovery, which is very akin to recycling. So ensuring that we are maximizing all of the economic value um, of the products that we are that are and materials we're utilizing. Um, how do we make choices um, in in film and TV that extend the life of a product? And to think about upgradability, resale, and repairability. Again, making the choices up front. What can we share to again maximize the use of products and materials to give them longer life, but to also give them more value in their life? span and then where can we actually use products as a service as opposed to um, an asset where we are sharing a product between many users again in order to give it longer life and also to give it more value during that life so these are really the core principles that will inform have informed the strat plan and will inform its implementation next slide so it's important to, again, understand why we want to transition from a linear to a circular and what are the social, environmental and economic gains that 
are really afforded by this transition. And we hope to actually measure and report on these gains in the context of the film and TV uh, um, a sustainability plan. And the environmental side, um, these will, will be familiar. We certainly want to reduce our reliance on virgin materials. We want better efficiency of existing resources that we use in the industry. We want to create market de demand for things like recycled material and recycled content. Uh, we want to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, waste, water usage, and of course, single reduce and, and if we can eliminate single use um, items where possible. The economic gains that we hope to achieve through some of the pilot projects that we will undertake under the STRAT plan, certainly opportunities to drive local employment, and certainly stimulate innovation, potentially new revenue streams from, again, adding value to products, materials, and systems um, in a new way, improve a financial response or fiscal responsibility and economic growth through savings, avoidance of purchasing and maintenance, maintenance again, um, uh, uh, um, ensuring that we are maximizing value and reducing costs. And then of course, eliminating all disposal or as much disposal as we can by a more efficient management um, and, and those the cost savings that are gained through that. And on the social side, again, local employment opportunities, overcoming barriers potentially to employment, thinking about gender equity and integrating that in potentially things like procurement choices, engaging marginalized communities, and then of course, fostering unique public and private partnerships, which I think is going to be a tremendous and important part of implementing the plan moving forward. Next slide. So um, how are we going to integrate a circular economy and action that in the film and TV industry? Certainly we think about it in the context of what are the uh, products and packaging that is common to what comes on to uh, what's utilized during production and and and, and during dur uh, within the industry. Uh, are we maximizing recyclability? Are we choosing compostability? How, how much reuse are we engaged in, or can we engage in? And of course, measuring um, many of the products and and services in terms of of maximizing recycle content. Um, how what are the what are the types of equipment? Um, costumes, uh, vehicle rentals. So what are the kinds of things that we procure and utilize and how do we ensure that, uh, that we're injecting some of these circular economy concepts? How do we work with our vendors and suppliers? Do they offer us take back services? What are the kinds of um, extended responsibilities we can share uh, with, with the vendors and suppliers that we do business with? Um, are we looking at opportunities to extend the life of set, set materials, construction, furniture, costumes, prop, props, um, and then uh, food rescue programs, and of course, on-site waste diversion programs when we're thinking about um, what we're consuming uh, on set and, and, and during, during, pro, uh, during uh, filming. So here's some of the areas at a very high level that we thought about as we, as we started to articulate the opportunities within the planet itself, but we are uh, very excited to hear more ideas from yourselves and, uh, and other um, uh, stakeholders and interested uh, individuals that will hopefully get uh, involved in, in, in the implementation phase. Next slide. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Caitlin Perry, um, who, or is this a point where Chrissy wanted to come in? Uh, am I messing up the agenda? Not at all, no, but if I could have just say a couple of words before we start into the strap plan, that would be great because I'd like to show our um, our marketing video that we launched today. So if we can, um, I'll cue that up in just a second and then I'll just give a little bit of an overview of um, of OGS and how we came to the strap plan. Um, so just bear with me while I, um, Caitlin, can you stop sharing your screen and I'll, thank you. Um, okay, so hopefully this works. It, I tested it. Um, we'll see if it uh, if it implements. Ontario's film and television industry is committed to a sustainable future. The Ontario Green Screen Initiative is a public-private partnership of industry leaders that have assembled to provide the tools, relationships, resources, and educational opportunities required to make real environmental change. 
Learn more about our two-year strategic plan at ontariogreenscreen.ca. Okay, did, was everybody able to hear that? <laughs> I didn't actually have any audio through my uh, through my headphones, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, you heard you, Thanks, you heard it. Okay, sorry. It worked on the test, but it didn't work uh, in implementing. So, <laughs> my apologies there. Um, so, I, I'm just going to take just a couple of minutes just to um, just to talk to um, everybody that's here, just about how um, Ontario Green Screen uh, has has um, not just Ontario Green Screen, but our strat plan has come to fruition. Um, so it's really exciting for me to be here, especially on Earth Day, to um, <clears throat> to kind of uh, celebrate this and mark this moment um, with with everybody that's attending today. Um, so just to give you a bit of a backgrounder, um, in in 2019, a sustainability working group was uh, was formed, um, and this was a, a group of um, of dedicated industry stakeholders who came together with with a unified concern. Um, they were looking for solutions to the problem of sustainability within the film and TV industry. Um, and there was a real urgency in, in making things happen and we needed collective activity in order to make this change. Um, so in March of 2020, the sustainability working group uh, wound down um, and Ontario Green Screen was formed. Um, so this was formed as an advisory committee uh, and it's uh, again of de dedicated industry partners who provide guidance, expertise, financial support um, through, throughout the year to kind of uh, to guide our, our initiatives. Um, the OGS uh, uh, officially launched in September, uh, September 10th, 2020. And since that time, we've developed a number of suite of tools that, and assets that, uh, that provide support to the industry resources and such. So we have climate sustainable production training, carbon calculator training, and I'm really happy to say that since we've launched, we have over 190 individuals that have been certified on carbon calculator um, training. Um, and, uh, and we have website assets and, and we're really, uh, really poised and excited to be moving into our implement, um, implementation stage. Um, on September 30th um, is when we, as an advisory committee, decided to uh, splinter out into smaller um, working groups to, uh, to work on various tax, tactics. Um, and uh, one of those was a strategic planning subcommittee group. Um, within that subcommittee group, we met numerous times uh, to talk about all of the uh, the ideas, the concerns, the the key goals, uh, the the ideas that really needed to be kind of formed into into this plan. Um, there were numerous drafts of this plan that we worked on over the course uh, course of months, um, and we were always focusing on the key concerns that were identified by the committee, uh, and distilled them into a kind of manageable, uh, understandable task tasks and task tactics. Um, that, that we could be implemented. Um, so I'd really just like to take a moment to, um, to put a shout out to everybody on that, on that st uh, strategic planning subcommittee group that uh, did so much work to get us to where we are today. Um, Justin Cutler uh, of the Ontario Film Commission, Marsha Douglas of CMPA, Cynthia Lynch of Film Ontario, Steve Hancock from MBSC Canada, David Hardy from William F. White's International, and Randy Cruz from MBSC Canada, and, and, uh, and our program management team as well, Caitlin Perry and Joanne St. Um So Joanne and Caitlin came into the role in early 2021, and they brought with them a wealth of sustainability sector knowledge, um, as you can see from, from what Joanne has just kind of provided to us. And, it's, and they've also brought in some pretty incredible design skills as well, which you'll, you um, may have seen already, but you'll see in the, uh, in the strat plan as we go through it. Um, CIC also helped us not only finalize the plan, um, but they also provided some integral sustainability insights to us and best practices and, and how circularity can fit into, production, into the production industry. Um, so I'm really very excited about the partnership with CIC uh, going into our initiation stage uh, of Ontario Green Screen. And um, the development of the strat plan was one of our key deliverables for year one of this initiative. And I'm, we're really pleased to, to present this with, uh, to pre present this to you today. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Joanne and Caitlin um, and uh, they can give us a guide to, guided tour of our uh, strategic plan. Super, thanks, Chris. Okay, Caitlin, <clears throat> I think you're first up. Caitlin's going to walk you through um, the initial part of the uh, of the strap plan through these next slides, and then uh, I will take over to uh, to wrap it up. Sorry, Joe. I thought you were doing the um, the environment the um, 
slide and the next one going over the plan. Sure, happy to do that. Sorry. <laughs> so um, there's obviously some uh, overarching um, uh, objectives or gains as it relates to um, the the you know the purpose. Uh, what are the what are the kind of uh, the, the focus? Obviously, is is in is the environmental pillar, um, and 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 what it can deliver um, through through its activities. So uh, the mission is simply to develop tools and resources that empower Ontario's film, <coughs> excuse me, and television industry to adopt environmentally sustainable best practices and business models to reduce its environmental impact. And you can see by the video and certainly the sentiment throughout the discussion so far, that it's going to take a collaboration amongst the value chain within, within <coughs> the industry itself. <coughs> and it's um, very much acknowledged that uh, we're at a starting point needing a lot of tools and training resources to be able to empower and enable all of the actors within that value chain to take part. There's really two overarching environmental goals that you'll see our thread throughout all of the activities. Uh, first being a reduction of greenhouse gases and also a reduction in solid waste. Next slide. So in terms of what the um, plan entails, it's really built on four key pillar activities with very actionable goals and tactics with measurements underpinning them. These pillars include build community, inform and educate, implement best practices, and measuring impacts. And you can see by their nature, they are very interconnected and actually need to be uh, activated concurrently or simultaneously. We really recognize that you can't manage what you don't measure, and you certainly do not know how impactful the uh, the strat plan will be without measuring and monitoring. So that's very much integrated directly into all aspects of the plan, um, and and we know that the industry has um, you know really taken a, a, a hit in this past uh, year uh, during the pandemic, and and certainly we want to in the sentiment of build back better and resilient and more sustainable. There's a tremendous opportunity in front of us to do that. Currently, uh, we are developing a plan that out outlines the specific milestone dates and roles and responsibilities. So taking those four pillars and really branching them out to have discrete tasks that will be assigned milestone dates to keep our feet to the fire and uh, better inform um, who are the actors that will be responsible for ensuring that they are um, indeed implemented. We envision quarterly reporting with communications through these kinds of meetings, through news newsletters, and on the OGS website. There will be an interim review of the strategic plan to make sure that it is still relevant and all aspects within it are still relevant um, and, and to course correct if in fact we need to add or in some cases subtract from what we've done um, and certainly all while taking feedback uh, from, from industry players such as yourselves. Each pillar will have a preliminary list of key performance indicators. This is all part of monitoring and measuring, and they will be tracked over the duration of the plan and reported back to all of the partners and stakeholders so that you can, you can really see the impacts of the implementation and track its progress um, and see yourselves in terms of where you can uh, participate and support. And then some of the goals and tactics, um, which uh, I think Chris will talk a little bit about today are actually already under way so we're excited to get going now i will toss the baton over to caitlin who will take you through pillar one through three thank you joanne hi everyone so i'm again my name is caitlin um so i'm gonna walk through um the first three pillars and then joanne's gonna go um through the fourth one um so our first pillar is uh build community and um so we can, for this, we commit to developing an engaged, diverse and inclusive community that advances and enables sustainable production practices. Um, so although like Joanne mentioned that all these pillars are interconnected and each one is just as important, um, having a strong community is really gonna be important for the success of um, the implementing the goals and tactics that we're gonna be talking about today. So that's why building community, I think, is the first one. Um, it's having that strong community is so important for the success of our plan. 
Um, so the first, so this pillar has three goals, um, promote communications opportunities for sustainable production practices, uh, create an OGS ambassador program, engage with things this existing private not-for-profit organizations and all of levels of government to identify collaboration opportunities and available incentives and financial support. So for each uh, pillar, um, if you've seen this, the strategic plan document already, um, each pillar has um, the, its goals listed and then um, the tables that outline the, the specific tactics and some high level timelines for those tactics to be completed. So um, each pillar follows the same um, format. So the, for the first, um, and like Joanne mentioned, um, the timelines here are um, a bit broader and high level and further on there'll be a more detailed uh, program plan for implementation, implementing each tactic. Uh, so for the, for, for the first goal, um, promoting communications opportunities. Um, the tactics for this goal are really going to be ongoing communications opp opportunities for the, in, um, for the initiative. So the first tactic, um, which will be an ongoing thing, um, is ongoing uh, organize quarterly community meetings to share OGS updates, review progress and share back best practices. That is something that's already done um, as we're doing right now in this community meeting. Um, uh, the second one is developing communication channels and processes to receive feedback from the industry at large. That's also something that um, is in the works. So we have a, um, a, a email address for um, the Ontario Green Screen Initiative where people um, from the industry can, um, can submit feedback um, and share best practices and, um, and their uh, thoughts and of inquiries about the initiative and this um, in the um, program. Um, identify key vendors, suppliers, and service across the industry and promote uh, OGS initiatives and the Ontario Production Guide. Uh, collaborate with organizations and other film jurisdictions to align and share best practices. So those again, those will all be ongoing things throughout the two-year plan. Uh, the second goal um, is the OGS ambassador program. And this is something we also help hope to get um, off the ground right away once, um, once we start implementation. Uh, so the first step will that, for that will be identifying and promoting, um, identifying engaged industry professionals um, who are committed to sustainable production have already expressed an interest in um, sustainability and promoting the ambassador program to these um, engaged professionals. And that again will be an ongoing thing to, throughout the two years and recruiting new ambassadors on board. And a big part of that will be developing tools and resources to assist our ambassadors to share uh, best practices, uh, motivate um, the industry and enable film workers to champion the OGS initiative um, and develop communication channels uh, to allow ambassadors to share best practices, share stories and communicate amongst the, each other across the industry. The third goal, um, engage with existing private, uh, not-for-profit organizations and all levels of government. Um, so uh, the f main tactic for that um, we'll be doing in every six months is um, reviewing and doing an update, an environmental scan of existing and sustainability partners and initiatives every six months. Um, just seeing who's out there, who we can work with, what um, sustainability initiatives we can um, use as best practices, uh, develop later on in the two-year plan, uh, developing standards that facilitate the best practices for sustainable productions in Ontario, um, identifying organizations who would be suitable for new partnerships, and collaborating with industry partners um, in all levels of government to promote sustainability planning, share reporting, and measurement tactics. And those two things will be done throughout um, the two-year plan as an ongoing um, tactic as well. So some of the um, measurements, so like Joanne mentioned, um, a lot of um, reporting and the communications will be doing um, reporting on measuring success. And we've select, for each pillar, we've selected um, 
a start of the KPIs and measurements that we'll be using to measure success uh, of the strategic plan. And this is just a start and this is just a sample of some of the possible uh, KPIs we'll be using. Um, of course, they, this will grow as, um, we're in, as we move into implementation. Um, so for building community, um, some of the measurements for this will be, you know, number of attendees in that attend the community meetings like today, um, the number of community meetings we have um, each year, the number of ambassadors we have, uh, number of advisory committee partners, and number of uh, partnerships, and of course, the quality of those partnerships. So for our second pillar um, is inform and educate. Um, where we commit to educating Ontario's film and television production workers, companies, production clients, and government partners on sustainable best practices. So for this pillar, we have four goals um, to develop one to develop and deliver speed of carbon and waste literacy courses to industry stakeholders, um, influencing uh, production practices to be more sustainable by sharing best practices, um, identifying and communicating those barriers and working part with partners to um, remove those barriers uh, to identify, um, to implementing sustainability initiatives. Um, identify and promote sustainable vendors, suppliers and services and promote in industry sustainable best practices in communities in which on, uh, the film industry is operating. And as we all know, um, film industry is really growing um, in Ontario and it's starting to um, move into more, uh, more communities across the province. So the tactics and timelines for this pillar, um, the first one developed um, the waste, carbon and waste literacy courses. So as everyone knows, um, and we have the climate sustainable production um, and carbon calculator training courses that have been offered um, since the start of the Ontario Green Screen Initiative, I believe. Um, and we just uh, we just released uh, the next block of dates for um, upcoming training sessions. So I encourage you to check those out on the Ontario Green Screen website. Um, there's now courses available that you can register for up into from May through to July. Um, so an ongoing thing will of course be um, offering those courses year round free of charge um, and enhancing and adapting these courses for industry needs um, later on in the two year um, if we need to expand or adapt them as needed uh, and working with the industry to integrate um, specific uh, or individual training sessions and adding um, training assets and um, incorporating them into orientation courses. For the second goal, um, uh, we'll be focused on uh, production practices, influencing production practices, be more sustainable by sharing uh, best practices, identifying the barriers and working with partners to remove those barriers. So that will be um, through the website. The OGS website will be the, the hub for sharing all the um, resources and information for the initiative um, throughout the entire two-year plan. Um, and on that on the website will include the resources for um, we'll be taking an inventory of all the resources that are available um, in the industry and identifying where there's gaps and where we need to come in and develop new um, new resources and training tools uh, for the for the film industry and developing uh, case Ontario case studies that de demonstrate the positive impact of adapting adopting um, sustainability practices for the environment in the industry and those case studies will really focus on um, uh, the success story, showing the success stories and um, how your production can, um, providing tips on how your production can um, implement these initiatives and um, communicating the results and of course the cost savings that are associated with, that were associated with um, implementing those best practices. Uh, the third goal um, established um, will be all about identifying and promoting sustainable vendors, service, 
vendors, suppliers, and services. So um, we'll be establishing some clear requirements and setting up a vetting process for vendors that claim to be um, to, to be green or uh, offer green and sustainable services. Um, and expanding the using this these requirements to expand the list of green vendors offered in the Ontario Production Guide um, that is available online. Um, and then again, and then of course promoting those vendors who have been vetted and those new vendors who are included in the um, production guide and, and uh, promoting them as a sustainable um, option. For the fourth goal, um, promoting industry uh, sustainable best practices in the communities that are being operated, film industry is being operated in. Um, so we'll be creating a communication stakeholder map um, and leveraging what other jurisdictions are currently doing. Um, early on, we'll also be developing social media channels to build um, build the community and engage um, and promote green action and uh, develop marketing material um, like the video that Chris just showed us um, to really um, engage uh, within the industry and to a broader audience. So that would be through videos and social media um, and different um, types of marketing collateral. Uh, so the success measurements for inform and educate will really, again, also um, will be quantitative um, and qualitative in nature. Um, uh, some measurements include number of production uh, sessions scheduled annually, um, number of uh, training certificates issued and the um, attendees, number of attendees, um, the number of green vendors um, vetted and registered into the Ontario Production Guide, and all of the um, kind of marketing and digital marketing type um, um, KPIs such as social media stats and um, website analytics. That brings us into our third pillar, so implementing best practices. Um, so where we commit to delivering resources, tools, and initiatives that assist Ontario's film industry to implement sustainable strategies and protocols that promote environmental stewardship. So we have four goals for this pillar. Um, and as, you'll, as you can see here, um, all four of them kind of are structured around um, four key environmental areas. Um, that we identified as kind of the biggest impact areas in environmental impact areas in the industry. So the first one is reducing greenhouse gas emissions related to fuel and energy consumption across production, uh, reducing food supply chain waste, uh, food, food, uh, food supply chain waste and um, those related GHG emissions, uh, reducing single use plastics across all areas of production, which we heard is a big, is a major issue. Um, and promote circularity and reuse in costume design sets and props and construction. The tactics and timelines for um, these four goals. Um, so for the first goal, um, right away, one of the first, um, one of the first uh, initiative tactics that will be um, implemented is the planning and implementation of a hybrid uh, slash EV vehicle pledge that is supported by the industry. Um, that's something that's in development and will be um, one of the first um, initiatives that will be implemented as this, under this plan. Um, the other tactics include um, exploring opportunities to implement grid tie-in capabilities in frequently used production locations. And this will, um, the goal for this is to reduce the um, the use of diesel generators, um, promote introductions between the industry and in innovators to help facilitate the use of high efficiency um, energy solutions to production. So that would be through pilot pro programs and um, different testing systems. Um, encourage the industry to procure vendors and suppliers that provide high efficiency power sources and fuel alternatives. So. Um, using rechargeable uh, generators, solar and biogas um, are some of the sustainable options for that. And of course, uh, identify service providers that offer solutions for the use of digital documentation and production. 
Um, so um, for the second goal, um, reducing food supply chain and waste and the related GHG emissions, um, one of the first um, tactics for that will be researching opportunities to expand um, to expand some of the already existing food rescue programs. And once we've uh, researched um, what communities needed and where we where we think it will be the most best um, best impact, um, we will then go and implement uh, expand food rescue partnerships and implement those on production sets through pilot projects in select jurisdictions. Um, and uh, focusing on the um, kind of GHG emission related emissions to the food supply chain um, will be uh, promoting the selection of catering vendors um, that offer uh, low emission food, low emission menu choices. So things like local, um, um, promoting um, caterers that use local ingredients um, and plant-based options. Um, and of course, like things like single um, reduction of single use plastics, so we'll get into the next slide. Um, so the third goal is reducing um, single use plastics across all areas of production. Um, so the first tactic uh, will be in planning and implementing a plastic reduction pledge and campaign and developing a way to um, promote progress made in productions across the province. One idea we had for that is to have a heat map where we could um, have all of the productions that have pledged on to um, reducing um, their plastic footprints and have and that heat map shows all of the um, productions across Ontario who are taking action to reduce their plastic use. Um, the second tactic is encouraging uh, the industry to use suppliers to support sustainable business models. So this again would be similar to the last uh, goal where um, with the caterers um, encouraging the use of caterers that use that um, use offer reusable containers. Um, there's a few pilots here in Ontario that do that. Um, uh, post, offer offer post consumer recycled um, or packaging and products that provide that uh, contain post consumer recycled uh, material uh, plastics and also um, biodegradable options. And later on um, at the end, um, towards the um, second part of the uh, strategic plan, piloting a touchless uh, water bottle refill station in, um, in a production as a pilot project. Uh, I think that would have to be um, later due to COVID um, restrictions um, and health and safety uh, concerns regarding that. Um, and the fourth uh, goal, uh, promoting circularity and reuse in costume design and construction. Um, so one of the first in, uh, tactics um, for this goal is developing an online tool that connects industry stakeholders to facilitate uh, sharing and reuse of set materials and wardrobe um, through communication channels. Um, investigate options to collaborate with industry to pilot a sustainable lockup program where sets and construction materials and wardrobe pieces can be warehoused and accessed for future use. Um, and working with local organizations to facilitate uh, distribution of donations and repurposing of materials outside the industry. So that would be like working, um, partnering with local um, organizations to um, not-for-profit organ organizations to do donate things like textiles or um, construction materials to uh, organizations like uh, Habitat Restore. And that will be an ongoing thing throughout the an initiative throughout the um, two-year plan. So the measurements for this, um, for this, for the implementing best practices um, as you can imagine, are very um, uh, quantitative. Um, so they're really um, focused on measuring the environmental impact of um, the pilot projects and tactics that will be that were outlined in uh, under those goals in this pillar. So um, things like uh, measure, uh, measuring the amount of food waste saved through uh, food rescue programs um, and diverted from landfill, um, the amount of plastics diverted from landfill, 
through the pledge um, and the, um, uh, the number of clean power solutions researched and implemented, um, number of signatures on the hybrid vehicle pledge, and uh, the amount of set materials such as costumes and uh, construction and props uh, diverted from landfill through those um, reuse and uh, repurpose um, opportunities. And it's kind of the perfect segue into the next, um, into the next, uh, our fourth and final pillar, uh, which is measuring impact, which Joanne is going to go through. Thanks very much, Caitlin. So fourth and final is really where it all comes uh, together um, and really explains and provides evidence of how each of these activities that and tactics that we've described, how have they made an impact, um, in particular environmental impact. So the goal itself is uh, to first and foremost develop a process for gathering baseline data, data and measuring the environmental impact in a standardized way. We understand that, um, that there's not a lot of data available in terms of the environmental impact um, sort of globally on the industry and certainly, certainly specifically in each of the uh, convening areas that we've spoken about today. So the first task at hand will certainly be um, discussing and, and really developing an approach to standardizing how we track, measure, and report against all of these specific tactics. So to um, undertake this task, we plan to work with other jurisdictions that have maybe a little uh, done this a little bit uh, or ahead of us um, and to try to leverage their experience to collect industry data and maybe use it as a proxy for the Ontario context to aggregate carbon output data from participating production companies, studios to establish the baseline reporting um, similarly, and to develop tools and resources that will actually help the entire value chain collect data related to solid waste and greenhouse gas emissions. So um, there are lots of moving parts in the industry. There are lots of disparate activities. Um, and so we want to be able to compare apples to apples, if you will, between all of the initiatives. Uh, we want to collect and aggregate that data and provide um, a, a carbon calculation tool that helps us to track, report, and, and communicate that impact. Next slide. So uh, how are we going to track our progress around developing measurements and uh, around the measurement of uh, measurement impact? We want to see several implementation of, uh, or the implementation of several baseline tools used to measure various data points. We want to, uh, involve as many jurisdictions that OGS is working with to um, help them collect data in a standardized way. The number of productions that are sharing their data, very, very important in terms of benchmarking um, and also uh, reporting progress for comparisons. The number of productions that are actually utilizing the tools that we are going to develop through the STRAT plan. And of course, the overall greenhouse gas emissions reduced by the industry. And then really that should say overall greenhouse gas emissions and solid waste. Next slide. So that concludes the description of the four pillars. There is a lot of detail. You've been very, very patient as we've delivered it. We're very proud of it and certainly uh, blessed to have such an engaged uh, and bright group to work with as we, as we rounded out this strat plan and, and brought it across the finish line. We are more than welcome to um, take any of the uh, questions or areas that you'd like us to elaborate on points of clarity within the, uh, the strat plan itself. So thank you very much for being with us this evening and uh, we're excited to work with all of you. Thank you so much, Joanne and Caitlin for that uh, really informative presentation. Um, so as uh, Joanne was saying, uh, the floor is open for questions um, and the way that it, um, the way that it works in this um, Zoom webinar um, is that uh, you'll have to put your questions into the Q&A um, and then we can start going through questions um, uh, that's located on the bottom of your screen, uh, bottom left-hand side. Uh, just click on the Q&A and you can type your questions in there. Um, but um, do we have any anybody that, uh, that has any questions or comments that you'd like to 
Uh, anything that we may have missed that um, any of our panelists might want to uh, jump there, in? On? There's a couple of questions, Chris, in the Q and A. Oh, coming in. They're coming in. Okay, great. Um, so I'm not sure if the attendees can read, can see the questions, but um, but I will uh, I will uh, read them out. So uh, first question: uh, Adoption is highly influenced by additional costs, not always perceived as having value. For example, storing a set for later reuse can be more expensive than scrapping and rebuilding. Are these incentives to change that thinking? Does any of our panelists, would they like to jump yeah, in? Yeah, I can sort of take it. Thanks for the question. I'm happy to, to chat to that. Um, you know, I think in it, the, the point is well made. And I think um, when we think about um, uh, delivering value, um, and as I said, we're in, the, in the first couple of slides of the opening, you know, based on, on um, leveraging circular design, what we really want to do is maximize the use of things like uh, uh, sets um, and props. And so what we want to think about is, is how do we get them to be maximized, the use of them maximized without having to store them. That would be the first um, you know, the first desire. So is there a tool or resource that when will better facilitate sharing between uh, between uh, the supply chain or the value chain within the industry itself? So, you know, that would be ideal. Um, and, and, I, and I guess the other, the, the, the other primary question we may ask is, is there a way that we can get access to the things that we need without actually purchasing them for the, for the purposes of storing them? Um, and, and, and you really, that's going back to products as, as a service. So is there a rental opportunity um, is, is one of the first ideas. So I, you know, I think we have to turn some of these practices on their head. And, and the point is well made that you know, we want to uh, not in, in Inject more cost into the system, but more value. Sorry, and I'll just add that I think where where we do need help or incentives to offset things, that's that's part of the other work that we'll look at is um, working together with the communities, identifying where those opportunities are, and then um, sorting through um, how to solve some of those challenges. So it's looking at alternatives and also trying to solve any um, challenges or barriers to advancing this work. Great, thanks, Marcia. Um, so the, the next question is, um, will the proposed federal government new emission targets change the approach of the STRAT plan? Marcia, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, you know, we're obviously seeing some urgency coming out of, of, of the government admitting that, in fact, we haven't gone far enough and we haven't met the, the, the objectives that, that we have, have set out for ourselves. And so we, we feel that urgency and we think that now it sort of affirms that this is the right time to implement such a strap plan. So we certainly hope that, uh, that, that we can work with the federal government um, uh, in particular to, to help us support what we want to do here. And I'm just looking down to Sarah's point about um, the federal budget and, and the supports for telefilm. Um, and, and so, you know, this that's exactly the kind of cross-pollinization of, of programs and resources that we want to leverage. Um, so, so I don't think it'll change the strat plan, uh, but I do think that it affirms that now is the right time to have such a strat plan. Great, thanks. Um, there was questions are coming in here. So um, so uh, will o OGS focus its data collection primarily on Canadian productions shooting in Ontario? I'll, I'll start with this one, Justin, I don't know if you want to go, but, but no, <laughs> we would like um, as many productions as possible to use Albert, but we, we aren't taking only a one calculator approach. We, there is room to help advance um, the reduction of GHGs and, and looking at carbon footprints using whichever calculator. Um, we uh, would love to see productions using the Albert calculator that um, is part of the OGS system because uh, it'll help us to better aggregate the data. Um, but we want to provide tools and resources for productions, uh, not only Canadian productions, but any production that's looking to work in the jurisdiction. And Justin, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I mean, I think you've, you've covered a lot of it. We are trying to find consistency across Canada so that it's, it's easier for producers to um, fill up these types of forms and, and we can aggregate that information um, for future targeting. But 
We also acknowledge that we've got a, a very healthy mix in Ontario of foreign and domestic work, and those uh, foreign productions, particularly productions coming in from the United States, are mandated to use the PGA tools. So we're looking at all ways that we can support those tools as well, so that productions can, you know, make a green difference um, when they're filming in, in the province. Great, thanks, Justin. Um, so there's a question from uh, Brad here. Um, you've explored technology specific. Um, have you explored technology specific for production, such as lidar scanning locations to reduce the need uh, to do more uh, remote scouting, like previs to eliminate unneeded set construction? Um, as lighting has been shifting to LED, um, has any program being created to, to ensure that manufacturers of these uh, fixtures are ensuring that recycling of their electronics? Um, I, I really wish David Hardy was here because he'd be able to give us some uh, really great insight into, into that. Um, but I think our esteemed panel here might be able to answer that, uh, that question for you, Brad. I, I do think Randy is here though, actually, not to put anyone on the spot, but um, maybe Chris, you can see if Randy wants to in. Uh, I think these are terrific suggestions. That's why we're having these community meetings actually. So um, please keep these kind of ideas coming. Uh, certainly um, you'll see from our advisory committee that um, it's, it, is um, industry stakeholders from across the sector who uh, want to participate and have already um, taken on some of these initiatives themselves within their companies. But um, that's part of what we want to do is to amplify best practices or to identify opportunities to, um, to, to institute some of these things on, on a more scaled version. Um, so there's some, some great things here. And certainly Justin and um, the locations library, I think, already does a lot to try to help uh, build that package and certainly COVID I would think has helped to accelerate some of the work around remote scouting as you said but um, hopefully that helps answer your question. Yeah thanks for the question Brad um, and yeah please keep in touch with us um, and as, if there's any opportunities for us to kind of collaborate in the in the future um, it, we, uh, welcome any and all ideas uh, into the into the OGS program. Um, so uh, the next question um, is uh, would you like to see, uh, um, what would you like to see from regional municip municipalities for supporting income, incoming productions and how, uh, how can we work with local vendors, municipal resources, such as um, using recycling centers instead of contracting uh, junk removal uh, vendors and such. This is from um, Amesha. Amesha, yeah, I can, I can jump in here. So thanks, Amesha. Um, you know, I think that what we're really looking for uh, as a starting point is to better understand how uh, your waste diversion programs work, um, what, what uh, local um, incentives or, or funding opportunities might be available to support the industry when they're filming in, in your community. Um, I will say that we have our regional film forum coming up in the near future, and there will be a panel uh, with uh, uh, Joanne and, and Caitlin and um, a few other representatives where we talk about those strategies specifically about how regions can support um, specific tactics within this plan. So we're definitely going to be rolling uh, out that, that, uh, those conversations over the next few weeks. Great. Um, next question is, um, uh, have you addressed the lack of infrastructure in cur current studio designs that essentially would require that infrastructure to be installed by every production in going, uh, production going in which uh, is waste of production time and money uh, and energy and consumption? I don't know if we've uh, been able to address that um, fully uh, within the strat plan, but this is definitely something that we'll be looking looking at in terms of infrastructure and, and how we can kind of help the industry um, in, in building infrastructure needs and, um, and working towards those goals. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can maybe encourage Brad um, to be in touch with us to talk about what infrastructure he thinks is lacking, um, only because we don't know your industry, but we certainly know uh, what how uh, what we can apply to improve the sustainability impacts or what what's needed. So, you know, some some details around you know what he thinks is the lack of infrastructure would would be really really helpful. That's great. Um, I, I would also add that you know for for new uh, studio developments, we're often included in some of those conversations that Ontario creates, and as are many of our advisory committee members. Um, so we have all been uh, advocating for. Um, uh, green resources and tools to be built into those developments uh, as they move forward and we'll definitely continue with those con consultation efforts. Yeah, and I would just add, uh, as Justin has mentioned, uh, you know, we have a few of the larger municipalities who's actually joined our board, but we 
Um, as part of our programs, and you'll see this in the strat planning going forward, you know, we want to collaborate and foster partnerships. And we also want to create opportunities, um, as I said, to sort of scale best practices. And that could include bringing studios together to talk about things they've learned and, and things that we should move forward. But um, as Joanne said, like, please feel free to reach out, especially if you have good ideas. That's part of these community meetings is making sure that we're talking to um, people who are engaged in the industry in different ways, because some of you are dealing with this stuff every day in your jobs. And um, it's important for us to understand how things work in practice. Thanks, Marcia. Um, there was a question from Sarah as well, and I, it might have been answered a bit earlier um, in the Q&A, but earlier this week, the federal budget uh, supported telefilm in providing better access to green practices. How can this help uh, drive interest and adoption in the plan? So I can start with that one and just to say to Sarah, thank you so much. And we are thrilled to see money coming forward um, for our financing partners for, for productions and certainly um, we'll be in touch. And I think um, again, that's part of the partnerships, but uh, we have had some discussions with some of the other institutions. And so uh, if we can support their work or if they can support ours, um, certainly we'll be working together to try to um, help Telefilm on its productions and the productions in Ontario to uh, be more sustainable. Great, thanks, Marcia. Um, uh, an anonymous question, uh, the, the, the engagement plan attempts to work with all types of organizations within the industry. What is your plan for students uh, in media programs at the university or college level? I can jump in there. I mean, I think one of the first steps is ensuring that our training program um, is exposed to those students. And uh, I know that our partnership subcommittee is working on how we can align with academic institutions that have tra film training programs to potentially include that within their, um, their syllabus uh, for, for their programs. Great, yeah, and um, just to kind of add on to that, Justin, we, with our training program, we've kind of expanded a, a little bit in that we uh, did a bit of a pilot program uh, with, uh, with Queen's University in Kingston, um, where we brought some uh, film studies students into uh, the climate sustainable production training, uh, training program um, prior to them moving on to their onset uh, portion of their practicum. Um, so we're looking at ways that we can kind of expand the training and, and be available to uh, post-secondary in, in institutions as well. And we're, we're currently working through that. Um, next question is um, uh, back to the question regarding fostering a system that facilitates uh, services, facilitates and services circular design build actions, uh, because this has already been established somewhat in BC with the Keep It Green Recycling, um, um, is OGS collaborating or liaising with them to help establish similar services in Toronto and Ontario? Uh, I mean, I can, I can touch on uh, our partnership or our, our um, uh, alliance or, you know, work with Creative BC. Um, you know, we've worked very closely with Creative BC and the Real Green program um, in understanding uh, how their strap their, their initial strap plan rolled out what some of the successes of that program were and um and how we could even strengthen upon some of those lessons in ontario um, so we worked very closely with them to license the real green program uh sorry the um uh, yes the real green program via albert for ontario for our training courses uh, and we're also looking at some of their other initiatives uh, like the sustainable lockups etc to see how we could replicate um, some of those uh, very efficient tools in Ontario. Thanks, Justin. Anybody else have anything to add to, to that question? Um, no, the only thing that I might that I might say, if I could, is that um, one of the first things we'll do, and we were already already started doing it as it relates to developing the strat plan, was to actually uh, baseline or take an inventory of some best practices, not only in the Canadian context but also elsewhere as well, to try to inform you know the 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 realm of what's possible in the first couple of years. So um, we we don't intend to reinvent the wheel, and we will um you know leverage um good practices elsewhere and and use them as a starting point in the context of of the ontario green screen yeah you know i, I should also add that we have also um recently co-chaired a uh, a national green committee uh between ontario creates and, and creative bc with all of the provinces and the territories um and a number of other national uh, organizations, um, labor groups, suppliers, vendors, etc., to talk about where some of these efficiencies might lie. 
um, because you know there are other jurisdictions like Manitoba that have also adopted the um, the real green uh, training program for climate and sustainable production. So we're trying to figure out how again we can make this consistent for producers across the province and not always reinvent the wheel. Um, thanks, Justin. Um, Brad uh, also provided some some further uh, clarification on, on to his question about video distribution, lighting control, data distribution, and things like that. And and uh, Randy actually responded to the question. So and and the um, confines of uh, Zoom webinar is that um, uh, you can't see that that response. So I'll I'll read it out here. So this is from Randy at uh, at MBSC Canada. So um, so MBSC are working hard as a as a committee. Uh, to extend adequate electri electrification of studios. And we know that it will require a partnership with utilities, cities, and industry. Um, it's an absolute cl critical priority um, as it's grid tie-in, um, as is grid tie-in, sorry. Uh, please feel free to be in touch and learn more about the actions that we're taking both in Ontario and in BC. And so that's MBSC Canada, um, Randy Cruz's response. Um, and Darren uh, has a question. So why is it so difficult to implement a greener, less wasteful regimen within the film industry? Uh, for example, why can't we, we replace plastic utensils with wood, bamboo, or, or and styrofoam and aluminum takeaway containers with biodegradable ones? Um, it's like the $100,000 question. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and what I can say, you know, and it's one of the most important questions. And 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 what what I can say, Darren, is it's not just the film and TV industry. I think it's just old habits and old ways of thinking that we need to shed. And this is the start of doing so. So it's a really great point. And I think what we want to do in the first two, two years, and we with the committee, we've said this um, several times. We we want to do the low lying fruit. We want we we really want to tackle the things we can do easiest first. Of the obvious things first and the things that are certainly we have alternatives for and so you've you know through your examples you've indicated that and and we echo you we hear you and that is absolutely our intent so keep the ideas coming for for sure and i'll just say um there are some great caterers who i think have already taken on some of this so if we can build on that that's where sometimes the solutions are there and they don't always necessarily cost more it's making that access easier and that's where we're working with uh, Caitlin and Joanne and, and there are resources already on the Ontario Green Screen website and we're going to keep building on those to try to make it as easy as possible. Great, thanks Marcia. Um, so Angelica has a question. Um, are there opportunities for productions who are, who are already starting to pilot some circular initiatives uh, to share these lessons learned and our best practices with Ontario Green Screen or other companies? Um, so the short answer is yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, please share them with us. Um, so on Ontario Green Screen, we're, um, we're wanting to kind of bring in all of these kind of uh, fantastic stories about productions uh, reducing their emissions, reducing their waste. Um, so if you do have them, get in touch with either myself or Caitlin, um, and, uh, and we can start looking towards maybe building out a, um, uh, a case study, um, or, or we can highlight you on our website, or we can, uh, once we have our newsletter in place, then we'll be able to uh, promote uh, what your production is doing through our, through our newsletter. Um, so the, the more, I think the more that people hear of all of the great things that productions are already doing, currently doing, um, that will just kind of help build the momentum and people will be, will have, uh, be a bit more empowered to kind of make those changes and kind of be the change that we want to want to see. And, and for productions that are taking this on, if you're finding particular challenges, like please reach out because we're going to try to help you solve those challenges and, um, and hopefully find new ways forward together. That's what Caitlin and Chris um, have already been trying to do in providing those resources, but I think um, certainly there's opportunity for, for more. And then Randy uh, just res is responding to Brad, um, say happy to be in touch with you to discuss further. Um, she sent a reply in the chat, so I'm, I'm not sure if you got that, uh, Brad, but it's, uh, it's Randy, R-A-N-D-I-K-R-U-S-E at M-B-S-E-C-O dot C-A. And those are all the questions that we had. Um, any other additional questions? And J Jared, Jared Lawrence is saying bike. to ride your bike. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yes. Jared, yes, let's all ride our bikes to work <laughs> when we get to go back to work. <laughs> um, so if there aren't any more questions, um, I think we'll, uh, we'll begin kind of wrapping things up. 
Um, I just wanted to um, provide a little bit of a, an update as to where we are. Next steps uh, for on Ontario Green Screen. Um, we are planning on having a, a, another meeting, uh, very like in quarterly meetings for for the community uh, for, for the community outreach. Um, so keep keep an eye out for that uh, because you've responded and, and attended this this meeting. You're on our distribution list, so we will always be sending um, uh, notifications to you through through that list. Um, if you if you don't want to be on that list, please let us know and we'll uh, we'll take you off that list. But we hope to keep you on that list and and kind of build that list over the next uh, the next year or so. Um, right out the gate, we're really looking towards um, uh, working on our hybrid vehicle pledge. Um, so this is this is um, us coming to the industry to say, do you want to do you want to rent hybrid or electric vehicles uh, on your production? And we're hoping to get uh, as many signatures on this uh, on this this uh, this pledge or this campaign as possible, so that we can really show that the industry is wanting to kind of make that shift. Um, so that's something that we're going to be working on in the first uh, the first uh, two quarters coming out of uh, out of the launch of this strat plan. Um, if you're if you have any questions about what we're doing, please reach out to us at Ontario um, Green Screen. Uh, the the email address is uh, OGS, so Ontario Green Screen Info, OGS Info at OntarioCreates.ca. Um, Caitlin and Joanne also uh, put their email addresses up on the screen so you can respond to them as well. My direct email is cdunn at OntarioCreates.ca. Uh, so you can always reach out to uh, either of us. Um, and there's all kinds of resources on the website. So please check out our website. We have the strat plan is launched um, and it, it's living live on the website right now. You can click into a, a link for the, uh, for the strat plan. You can also see the, uh, all of the training sessions that are offered. We've got training um, that is uh, blocked and booked uh, up until the, uh, till the end of July this year. So uh, please take advantage of some training. Um, and uh, and that, that was all my uh, kind of closing, uh, closing points that I wanted to talk about. Is, does anybody else have any other um, questions or? I think there's one more question in the Q&A, Chris. There is one, yes. Um, okay, so this is uh, an anonymous question. Will requirements be established by the unions regarding sustainable uh, consultants, green production coordinators? Um, will the DGS, uh, I, I think that's DGC, or IATSE be representing uh, these professionals? So I'm not sure if anybody can. I, yeah, I don't know if we have an answer to that question. I, I, you know, um, it's it's certainly something that's certainly worth raising, but uh, we certainly don't have the answer at this point because it's, it is such a new position. I I, I would only point out that um, that really I had to name it um, extra DGC like. Um, they're all part of the advisory committee because they all recognize the importance of this work and, and how we can all work together on this. So I'm sure this could form part of future discussions. Great. And then another question came in just to confirm how do we sign up for the training sessions. Um, so it's, it's really simple. Uh, go to our website at uh, www.ontariogreenscreen.ca. Uh, click over to the training tab um, and then you'll find registration links uh, where you can register uh, through Eventbrite. To those training dates um, and then if you're interested in the uh, that's for the climate sustainable production training course um, if you're interested in the carbon calculator training uh, it's under its own tab it's called um, calculator training tab um, so you, same thing click on the registration tab and you'll be registered for those sessions um, so we'll be populating more sessions as they come uh, available but we've got a, a, a good uh, a good selection of uh, co uh, courses right now until the end of july so please um, please you know uh, register and tell your, your colleagues and friends to register as well. Okay, if there isn't any other questions, um, I think we can uh, wrap things up. And uh, I, I personally, I just wanna thank everybody for joining in today to this, uh, to this uh, session. It's really exciting to be launching this strat plan to be kind of moving into the implementation stage. And it's my actual honor to be working with such fantastic people, dedicated individuals that really wanna make lasting change in the industry. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, I wanna thank Marsha, uh, Justin, Joanne and Caitlin for, uh, for, for being here today and kind of uh, walking us through this plan. And of course, we're always open for uh, questions. Um, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us. We're, uh, we're always available to chat. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening and ha happy Earth Day. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.